November 18, 1985 was the night. And, and like I say, success affects a lot of people. I won a world championship. I was the MVP of the National Football League. I'd signed a brand new five and a half million dollar contract. I didn't need anybody. You know why? I was a star. I was good. No, you know what? I take that back. I was great. I loved me so much. I really did. But you know what I became? I became the single most despicable, egotistical maniac to walk the face of this earth because I didn't need anybody. So I thought. November 18, 1985. Good Lord works in mysterious ways, many mysterious ways, ways we don't even know. But he, the reason why I know the good Lord entered my life, and that was not a tragedy that happened to me, it was a blessing. Because I remember everything that happened that night. Never went into shock. I can close my eyes today, and I can see the room around me. I can see that stadium. I can see the big Longines clock at 10.05 p.m. I hear the voices in my ear. Everything I remember. I remember walking, and it started the night, I walked, the night I walked into that locker room. I walked into that locker room. We were in the midst of a lousy season. I wasn't playing well. We were four and four. I sat down in my locker, and I was going to do what every one of us in this room does from time to time. I was going to have a heart-to-heart -heart with Joe Theismann. Y'all do it. Y'all sit down and ask yourself, why am I doing this? Why am I here? Where am I going with my life? What's out there for me? I stared at that wall, and I said, all right, Joe. It's the Giants. It's Monday Night TV. This is your opportunity to be able to go out and show the world that that Joe Theismann that you love so much is back. Oh, I got up from that locker. I was excited. I was pumped. I was ready. And as you leave this room, you see these exit signs here. Picture below that exit sign, the Redskin logo. Not some cute, shiny little star that some people wear. <laughs> Picture that Redskin logo. For 12 years as the quarterback of the Redskins, I'm a superstitious person, I'll tell you right now. For 12 years as the quarterback of the Redskins, I used to run out of that locker room, hit that logo, and never said a word. This particular night, for some reason, I got up from my locker, I started out of that locker room, I hit that logo, and I said these words, tonight your life's going to change, Joe. Little did I realize I was into prophecy. My world was about to change like I could never imagine. Went on that field, 7 for 10, threw a touchdown pass. I figured, look out, world, Joey's back. The Joe Theismann that I love so much is back. We turn to start the second quarter. Coach Gibbs calls a flea flicker. Now, some of you may or may not understand the vernacular of football. I'll explain what a flea flicker is, but first you must understand what I did for a living. For 12 years as the quarterback of the Washington Redskins, I earned my living with my hands on another man's rear end. <laughs> now, that doesn't look very good on resumes until you apply for management positions. I got up under that center, took the snap, turned around, hand the ball to John Riggins, our Hall of Fame fullback. John starts towards the line. Just before he gets there, he stops. Should have fooled the Giants thinking it was a run. They should all be up here trying to tackle John. He turns around, pitches the ball back to me. I catch it, look down the field for what should be a wide open receiver. He's covered. I looked to my right for my safety valve. He was covered. Then I felt a little pressure coming from the left side, so I slid a little bit more to the right. All of a sudden, a gentleman by the name of Lawrence Taylor grabbed my left shoulder. I swung around. He wouldn't let go. And his LT came around his right leg, caught my right leg between the knee and the ankle. And right off my left shoulder, right where the big money speaker boot camp sign is. That was a commercial, a quick one. I heard a pow, pow. Sounded like two muzzled gunshots, but actually it was my right leg breaking. I had a compound fracture in my lower right leg. Later on the field, it seemed like an eternity. It was only five minutes. From the knee down, my leg went completely numb. As I opened my eyes, standing above me was Bill Parcells, the then coach of the Giants. Bill's looking down at me going, Joe, Joe, I'm sorry. I'm going, Bill, Bill, so am I. <laughs> Joe Gibbs comes running out and kneels down, looks in my eyes. He says, Joe, for six years we've been together. Joe, you've meant so much to this football team. Joe, this is a heck of a mess you've left me in. <laughs> I said, I'm sorry. Within five minutes of breaking my leg, I've seen two people. I've apologized to both of them. <laughs> then they start to wheel me out of that stadium and 55,000 people stood up and gave this selfish man an ovation like he'd never heard before in his life. 55,000 people said thank you to someone who thought he needed absolutely no one. And ladies and gentlemen, I tell you this, you cannot, will not, nor ever hope to be a true success in life if you think you're doing it by yourself. 